Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is implement queue using stacks. So in this question, we'll be given few operations which are standardly applied on a queue and the output will be given based on a queue. But these operations on the queue should be implemented using stack. So you have to implement the basic queue operations using stack. So let's take a few examples and see how we can implement the logic. So coming to the example here, we are given a method myQ, which is a standard initialization operation. And first we have to push and what are we pushing? We're pushing one. So in a queue data structure, you use both ends. You enter from the last and come out from the front. So imagine a basic queue in your school or college. So we insert one into the queue. So one will be inserted. Then in the next operation, we push another two. So two will be added from there and two will be here. And now peak operation. So peak should give you the top element. The top element in the queue is one. So one will be returned as the output, which is here. And pop will return the top element and also remove it from the queue. So this is the top element. So pop will return that element and it will remove from the queue. And we check if queue is empty. No, there is one element inside the queue. So we return false. Now this is the basic queue operations, but the catch is that you have to implement these operations using a stack. So let's take a look at the stack operation. So this is a stack and inside a stack, you insert from the top and come out from the top. So like a stack of plates. So let's do the same operations on the stack. So first we are pushing one into the stack. So we add one into the stack. Next, we are pushing two into the stack. We are pushing two on top of one. And now peak. Peak operation will return the top element from the stack. So peak is equal to two. But here, the answer should be one, right? Here, while using a queue, you should get one. So this is a wrong operation. And now pop operation. Pop will return two. But here again, it should return one. So this is wrong. This is also wrong. And pop will remove the top element from the stack. And now we are checking if stack is empty. No stack is not empty. There is one element. So this will also return false. In queue also it is returning false. Here you are getting two wrong answers. So how are you going to implement a queue into a stack? So for that, let us take another stack. So now I'm going to name this stack one and this is stack two. And again into this stack elements will come from the top and it will go out from the top itself. Now let's do a dry run again. So we push one into the stack. So we are pushing one into the stack. And now we are going to use this stack two. So you can call this a temporary stack to hold elements. So for example, if this stack contained one, two, three, you pop the top element and add it into the stack. You pop this element and add it into the stack. And you pop the last element and add it into the stack. And now using this operation, you can see that the order is maintained as per a queue. So in queue also one, two, three, the elements will be ordered in a line. And using two stacks, you can get the same order as a queue. So this is the main idea. And remember, I'm going to use stack two only to hold the elements and all the push pop and empty are going to be performed on stack one itself. So that is the main idea. So based on that, let me do a dry run. So first I add one into the stack and now in the next iteration, they're asking us to add two. But before adding two, I check if stack one is empty or not. If it is not empty, I'm popping that element. So one will be added here. And now two will be added into the stack and, and as soon as stack two is not empty. And if you have at least one element, I'm going to get pop that element back into the stack one. So one will be removed from stack two and will be added into stack one. So one will be added. I implement this concept of temporary hold the elements. So just to hold as soon as there is an element in the stack, as soon as there's an element in stack two, I pop that element and move it into stack one. So stack two is just a placeholder. We are doing peak operation. Peak and pop operations are going to be performed on stack one itself. So peak will give you the topmost elements inside the stack. So one and it is matching here. And now we need to perform the pop operation. Pop operation will return the topmost element. Topmost element is one and it will remove that element. And now empty operation. Empty operation is we are going to check if the stack one is empty or not. Stack two is just a temporary placeholder. So empty operation also on stack one. So we're checking if stack two is empty. No, there is an element. So it will return false. So now as you can see, the results are matching for queue operations, which we have implemented using two stacks. And stack two is just a placeholder. Now let's implement the same steps in a Java program. You can do a dry run for other examples, like push more elements into the stack. And as soon as you find an element in stack two, push it back in stack one. So this will be clear in the code. 
stacks and then do a dry run looking at the code. So I'm going to create two stacks, stack one and stack two. Both are going to contain integers. And you can leave this constructor empty because we already initialized and declared them here. Or you can just initialize stack one and stack two inside this and only declare them as global variables. But I also initialized them globally. So you can leave this part empty. Now we have to implement the push operation. So like I said, first we are going to insert the element into the stack. And what is this element? It is coming from X. So, so first add that element into stack one. And now we have to add two into stack one, right? So before adding two into stack one, if stack one is not empty, yes, stack one is not empty. Then we have to pop this element and add it inside stack two to make place for the new element. I have to implement that here while stack one is not empty. I have to pop the element from stack one and add it inside stack two. So stack two dot push of the element present inside stack one. So stack one dot pop. So what happened here? We popped this element and added it into the stack. So one will go away and two will be added here. And now for the next operation, it is peak, right? And we want our answer to be one, but one is present inside stack two. So as soon as stack two has an element, until this is empty, we have to push all the elements back into stack one. So now stack two is not empty. So I have to check that if stack two is not empty. So when stack two is not empty, we have to pop that element from stack two. So remove this element and add it inside stack one. So we removed from stack two. So stack one dot push. So we're pushing the stack two element. So stack two dot pop and add that element inside stack one. So this is a void operation. You don't have to return anything. So this is the push implementation, which is taking over of n time. And now, like I said, peak, pop and empty you have to check on stack one. So whatever element is present inside stack one, we have to return it. So return stack one dot pop. And if you want to peak, return stack one dot peak. And if you want to check if stack is empty, you have to check if stack one is empty. So return stack one dot is empty. So if stack one is empty, it will return to if stack one is not empty, it will return false. So this is the implementation of the code. Now let's try to run the code. The test cases are being accepted. Let's submit the code. And our solution has been accepted. So the time complexity, this is O of n and the all other elements are O of 1 and space complexity is O of n because we are using a stack to implement the output. That's it guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.